And here we go, guys. Let's now get into the analysis of some of the incidents of the 2021 Austrian Grand Prix. And we'll start off with probably the most controversial um, of the Grand Prix. And that was the Norris Perez incident from, I think, lap four, lap five of the Grand Prix. Where Lando Norris, of course, he got a five-second time penalty. It did cost him in relation to finishing in second in the Grand Prix. And let's first get into that. So as you can see here by this screenshot, Sergio Perez is trying to go round the outside um, at turn four. And at this point, still turning right, obviously trying to make the corner and get ahead of Norris. And they are now side by side. But as you will see, in terms of where Lando Norris places his car and the steering angle for Perez and I'll show with Norris in a moment... I don't really think there's anything that could have been done any differently really from Lando Norris's side or Sergio Perez's side. So Sergio Perez, you can see, turning right, trying, of course, to make the corner. Then at this point, still trying to, you know, turn right to make the corner and is now on the very edge of the circuit. And then at this point is now in the gravel. Now... Keep an eye in relation to the incident I'm going to review later on with Perez and Leclerc, where Perez forced off Leclerc at the same corner. Please remember the position of Lando Norris's left front tyre there on the kerb, because it will be important to note in terms of what I believe the differences are between these incidents. So Perez, like I said, turned right through that whole corner, as you could see there clearly, but just simply couldn't make the corner. But now I'll show Lando Norris is on board and show why, in my view, I don't believe it was a penalty. So here is Norris is on board. Sorry that the um, the you know the footage is not or the still picture in terms of quality is not that great. But this is the only one I could really find. So as you can see here, down to turn four, Perez trying to go round the outside. Now, at this point, Lando Norris, you know, he's basically hitting the apex of the corner of turn four, turning right, of course, into a right-hander. And honestly, he's not, you know, running wider into the corner than he would normally do. He's not missing the apex, as I said. So he's carrying on, really, the normal, um, I think, racing line through the corner. And then... You can see at this point, Norris still turning right through the corner. And then at about this point, does Lando Norris start to, you know, straighten the wheel up? But at that point, of course, Sergio Perez is in the gravel. And by the way, at this point where Norris starts to straighten up, that is the earliest point that he starts to do that. So when you look back through the incident here, because Norris and both Perez, as I showed a moment ago, are both turning right. You know, Norris is not um, trying to, say, straighten the wheel to try and force Perez to be on the outside. They're both trying desperately to make the corner and to continue being really side by side. I just don't see, from Lando Norris's point of view, again, as you can see, clearly turning right here, and by the time he starts to straighten up, Perez is already off the circuit. I just don't see... Because Norris didn't take really any different lines through the corner, didn't make contact with Sergio Perez, I don't see what Lando Norris could have done any differently in this incident. So I don't see how really you could penalise him because essentially you're penalising him for not giving Perez the outside line, therefore the position. Because the only way, in my opinion, this would have been avoided is if Norris just let him go around the outside. But as we saw, Perez was not ahead really that much of Lando Norris at all through turn four. They were essentially, as I said, side by side. So I don't see, like I said, what Lando Norris can do here. And again, keep an eye on that left front tie because it will be interesting to uh, compare in a moment in terms of you know, Norris's position on the curb there in terms of apparently forcing Perez off circuit and what Perez does in a moment to Leclerc. But when it comes to Norris and Perez, 
I do not believe that Lando Norris deserved a penalty because I just don't see what Lando Norris could have done any differently other than giving up the position, which at that point, you can't penalise drivers for racing. Yes, the corner is very tight and, you know, it's hard to get two cars through there, but, you know, you cannot penalise drivers for trying to hold on for their position and Norris, simply for me, did... I think what any other racing driver would have done. So I just don't see really, again, what he could have done any differently. Now, in relation to kind of a similar incident at the same corner later in the race between Sergio Perez and this time Charles Leclerc, Perez, I believe, was a lot more deserving of a penalty than Lando Norris was. And I will show why in just a moment. So he can see Charles Leclerc in the slipstream. With DRS safe, and so is Sergio Perez, of course, because Perez is within a second of Daniel Ricciardo ahead. And then here you can see Leclerc now starting to go around the outside. And here Leclerc, uh, of course, turning right. And he did this, of course, a week ago to Yuki Tsunoda, and it was a great move. And he's trying to do it yet again this time uh, to Sergio Perez. But the real differences between... Uh, the Norris Perez incident and the Perez Leclerc incident at turn four is Perez, I think, twice makes contact with Charles Leclerc. Now, I haven't, I don't believe at this point got the absolute, um, you know, right frame for when the contact was made, but it was very close around this time. And if you go back and watch the onboard clip, you will see Leclerc and Perez at about this point making contact. And then yet again at this point where I do believe I have got a slight frame there of contact being made. Um, again, that's two pieces of contact, which means that Perez has a lot more so forced Charles Leclerc to go wider and off the circuit because of the contact um, that has been made. So Charles Leclerc really... I think has a lot more to complain about, I think, at that corner than um, the Sergio Perez did, you know, with Lando Norris. Now, if we go back on board here with Charles Leclerc, you can see about this point, and you can see the two L's um, just behind the front right tyre of Charles Leclerc's car. That is the end fence of the Red Bull front wing. So that is about where contact is made the first time. And then here is about where it's made the second time, which is what forces Charles Leclerc to go a bit wider. But also, again, when I was saying earlier in terms of keep a keen eye on where Lando Norris's left front tyre is on that curb, now look at Sergio Perez and we'll compare it. So Perez, his left front tyre is a lot more further over to the left than Norris was. So you can see Leclerc's there. Now look at Norris's from this Norris is a lot more say to the center of the curb maybe slightly more center right of the curb but when we go back to Perez he's on the very edge of that red and white curb which is why in my opinion Sergio Perez was a lot more deserving of a penalty for this than Lando Norris was in that incident of course, of Norris and Perez on lap four of the Grand Prix. And this, I think, was the clearest um, out of, say, the Norris Perez uh, and then this incident. This was definitely the clearest penalty, if there was going to be one, in my view. But then, of course, these two had another incident uh, later in the Grand Prix. Not actually that many laps later at uh, turn six, which, of course, is a couple corners later on. And we'll just cut to this now. So this is Charles Leclerc's on board. Now at this point, Leclerc is progressively going around the outside of Perez. Is you know, getting further alongside Perez. And then, as I'll show, as you can see there with the uh, mobile one um, side of the front wing there, you can use that in terms of judging how far alongside Charles Leclerc is getting. You can see now Leclerc progressively getting more so alongside. And then at this point, you can just see he's getting basically fully alongside Sergio Perez now. And then at about this point 
is where Leclerc would be hoping that he would just about have enough grip around the outside to make the move going into, say, turn seven. But as I'll show in a moment with uh, Sergio Perez is on board, Sergio Perez, and I think this is a lot more marginal of an incident than the turn four incident between these two. But Sergio Perez, I think the reason he got a penalty was because he didn't make, I think, the reasonable adjustment that he needed to to avoid forcing Leclerc off the circuit here. So you can see Perez at this point where Leclerc goes into the gravel. You can see just a dark um, bit in the left-hand side, just to the left of Charles Leclerc's front left tyre. That is Perez's front wing. So Sergio Perez is using really the racing line, even though Leclerc has the racing line around the outside, which is what I mean. Sergio Perez did not adjust his car more so towards the middle or slightly away from the racing line to allow Charles Leclerc to have enough room around the outside there. And proof of that is here. So you can see here going into the exit of turn six, uh, Perez, you know, fully alongside Leclerc. Leclerc has more grip around the outside and more momentum around the outside. But at this point, you can actually see with Sergio Perez's uh, steering wheel, he, you know, loses the car slightly, but you can see that by his right front tyre there and also his front wing, which of course the very end of it is just to the right of his right front tyre in terms of sticking out from the car, he isn't giving Leclerc reasonable room for Leclerc to stay on the circuit without going into the gravel, which he did partially on the exit of turn six. So I do believe Perez also deserved a penalty for this. But again, this is a lot more marginal than the one at turn four. And I can, I can understand arguments against why Perez uh, got the penalty for, um, for this incident. I, can, I, I completely understand the arguments. It's a very, again, marginal incident. Um, the, these things can happen very easily, especially when you're fighting over such um, small bits of racetrack. I completely understand that. But in my view, Perez should have... In a way, Carlos Sainz did for Sergio Perez a year ago when Perez went around the outside of that corner. Should have made enough of a reasonable adjustment to allow Charles Leclerc to be still on the circuit. So I think Perez there did deserve a couple penalties. And for the final incident we'll cover is the one between Vettel and Raikkonen on the last lap of the Grand Prix. And this one is a, is a slam dunk. This was definitely Kimi Raikkonen's fault. So of course they're coming through just behind the Williams of Russell, the kink of turn six, and Sebastian Vettel clearly has better grip. He's on, I think, fresher tyres at this point and has better drive off the corner. And Vettel really should be allowed the position here. But Kimi Raikkonen, as you can see by the slight of him turning right there at the very bottom of the picture, he just simply doesn't allow Sebastian Vettel to have... Um, to have the corner and to have the position when really he should do. I know, of course, it's the final lap and he wants to fight for position. I get that, but Raikkonen just simply um, did not use, I think, the space on track well. Because as you can see here, if Sebastian Vettel is moving past him, there is inevitably going to be contact because Raikkonen is still too much towards say, the centre or centre-right of the circuit when Vettel is already on that part of the circuit. Really what Raikkonen should be doing is moving more so over to the left where you can see there is clear space there for Kimi Raikkonen to go to for Raikkonen, one, to still fight the position, but secondly, to avoid contact, but he never does that. He just stays in that position and then inevitably they meet in the middle, basically, and contact is made and then thankfully... They, um, even though they did go into the gravel, thankfully, they didn't hit the barriers and it wasn't a serious incident, even though, of course, it did cost them possibly getting into 11th place with the Williams just ahead of them. But, um, yeah, make sure, guys, to comment down below what you thought of my analysis of these incidents and also what you, um, you know, think of what happened with these particular incidents in the 2021 Austrian Grand Prix.